Try that again. Good morning. Welcome to worship. So glad you're here. Steve is over here going, stop interrupting. We're talking. Um, glad you're here this morning. Uh, I'm Pastor Eric Young. On behalf of our church council and our church staff, we're absolutely glad you're worshiping with us. If there's anything that you need, please see myself or any of your church council. Church council, if you're here, will you raise your hand? We got a few of you. Okay, look around. Here's your people at, and church staff here today. Um, you got myself. You got Andrew. I know I saw Nick wandering around. He's back there. So we got some staff too. If there's something you need, please see one of us. We would love to help out. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, speaking of church council, uh, church council meets tomorrow night up at the Claire Wolf Lounge. Claire Wolf Lounge is our old sanctuary. It's the building at the top of the hill. We invite you to come be part of that with us. Uh, come hear what's going on, what is happening in your church from an administrative standpoint. Um, but also, see if this is something that you might be called to do. Because at our annual meeting, we're going to be electing new council members. And we need good people, not just warm bodies. So if it is your gift set, we really do want you to come try it on and see if this is something you could do. Uh, next slide, Children's Church. Uh, we have a teacher this week, but we are still looking for more teachers. I think we need a teacher either next week or the week after, and we have nothing in Advent signed up. So if you are interested in how this works, um, I know, I think Heather is doing it today, okay? So talk, talk to Heather, and she can tell you what it's like and how it's not scary. Um, it really is something fun to do. But uh, please, uh, we are looking for volunteers for that, and Children's Church happens. Uh, every Sunday, you'll hear the children's music, and kids who are pre-K to third grade, we invite you to go out to uh, the narthex right outside the sanctuary, and we'll take you down to your classroom during that time. Next slide, uh, today after worship from 1030 to 1130 is Four Fifths Club. That is our fourth and fifth grade youth group. Uh, we'll meet down in the Yam Room, which is right past my office. Uh, we'll start there, and we'll go about our time. Next slide. Uh, newsletter deadline today so if you have something that Debbie needs to have turn it in today because uh, she'll start putting it together tomorrow which is when I'll start writing my newsletter article um, so please get stuff in for the good of our congregation uh, we, we do want to get that out and about next slide uh, well watered disciples that is a, a men's group that gets together once a month it meets on Tuesday at six o'clock uh, this Tuesday, and they'll be up at Luminary Distillery, which is just past I-90 on Peach. Uh, next slide takes us to, uh, we have a couple different things going on. The first is the Winter Coat Drive. This is where we start collecting um, coats, new or good used, um, to give to uh, a population that might not have access to that. So we are collecting those, but we are looking for someone to coordinate that. And I know you're going, ooh, I, I don't know what to do. It's not difficult. It literally is someone who is just going to keep track of that stuff. Gary Bax has got all the information for you. So if uh, you're interested or even might want to consider coordinating, talk to myself. All because you talk to me doesn't mean that you're signed up all automatically. Come talk to me and, and I'll help you understand what it takes. Next slide uh, takes us to the garden cleanup. Uh, the last Saturday of this month, the 28th, we're meeting outside from 9 till noon, as long as there's not tornadoes and hail and three feet of snow. And we're going to go ahead and clean up, our, clean up our yard, get it ready for the winter, so that way when spring comes, it's ready for us to start afresh and start anew. So please plan on being here Saturday, October 28th in the morning for that. And then that night, we have Trunk or Treat. 
Uh, we evidently have 300 or so kids that Saturday night come through. We are a safe place for our neighborhood to come gather. Uh, so please decorate your trunk, plan accordingly. And once again, if you do get the best trunk, you get this great trophy to show off. So it, it literally, it says, first place trunk 2023, St. Paul's Erie. So if you have the best trunk voted on by the parents of the kids that are here, you get to brag for years to come. And you can compete next year and show this off in your trunk because that might get you more votes next year as well. So you definitely want to do this. Now, if you aren't someone who's able to do a trunk, uh, please do feel free to donate candy uh, to those who are going to be here doing those trunks. That is Saturday the 28th, uh, following the, the evening worship. And we're going to go from 6.30 to 7.30 out in our uh, parking lot. Uh, Next slide, I told you there are multiple things that we're starting to do socially. Uh, our sock drive. We have a box out there for new men's socks. They'll go down to Erie City Mission um, just to keep feet uh, nice and warm through, through this uh, autumn and winter season. So we do want to collect that. And folks, I'll just tell you, I, I really am thrilled by the amount of stuff that we do in this place for outside this place how we take care of other people, and our, how we actually go out and do stuff in our mission field. So thank you for that. Uh, next slide is just a bunch of other announcements uh, that I have. Uh, first, crop walk. Um, we set a new record, not only with the amount of walkers where we had 41 walkers, $6,700 raised by this congregation. I believe that through the Erie Food Bank, um, one dollar buys two pounds worth of food. So that right there, if you, if you think about that, uh, and all that money went to the Erie Food Bank, that right there puts us somewhere around eight tons of, uh, of food. So six to eight tons in there. So well, well done on that. Um, it was our 48th crop walk, and I would just like to congratulate Ruthie May on walking 48 crop walks in a row. So. <laughs> But a couple people who really went above and beyond. I mean, our youth group, we had 19 walkers. They raised over $700. Um, you know, we have Mike Wright raised about $700 as well. So thank you, Mike. And again, uh, Carol set a new personal record of over $2,000 raised. So. So well, well done, folks. Really well done on that. And once again, taking care of people outside this place. Um, National Youth Gathering, we are still, we're, we're in the time that we need to collect signups. So come see me if you're National Youth Gathering or Young Adult Gathering. Um, last but not least that I have, uh, you note that on the altar we do have uh, a votive candle up there for one of our saints. When one of our saints goes uh, to meet Jesus face to face, we remember that their light shines bright. And that candle is for Shirley Sandstrom. Uh, Shirley passed away this week, um, this last week. The visitation will be Wednesday up at Duskus Martin. And the funeral will be here 10 a.m. on Thursday. So we do invite you to come celebrate Shirley's life um, with the Sandstrom family, uh, thanking God for her life and witness in this place. Those are our announcements for this morning. I do invite you at this time to now quiet your hearts, quiet your minds, and transition from getting here to being here.
I invite you to stand as we begin to worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. God, whose rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
You may be seated. Boys and girls, it's time for Children's Church. Let us now hear the word of God through our holy scriptures. Our first reading today is from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you, for you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lord, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the fourth chapter of Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Synthici to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy 
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatted calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to, in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. The king said to his attendants, Find him hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. This past week, I lost one of my oldest friends. Uh, she was married to my best friend in high school, and um, I'm the one responsible for it. You're welcome. Uh, but it was obvious to all of us that they were going to make a great couple, and, and they did. And after dating for many years, they got married in their mid-20s, went on to have two beautiful children, and uh, while raising these children, she found out she had metastatic breast cancer. And she fought it for almost a decade, and fought it well and fought it hard. But she lost that battle this past week. And my friend and I have been talking a lot. Um, we have been for years, but just especially this past week, just touching base and checking in. I was unable to make the funeral because, well, it was in Oklahoma on Friday, and I just couldn't get there and get back in time. But I was able to participate and be there um, virtually thanks to, well, this kind of stuff. I'm really grateful for uh, modern technology and the fact that I was still able to be there uh, for my friend uh, during this time. And then I watched, uh, I watched as the live stream counted down to where it went live, and when it came up, it showed this uh, Methodist sanctuary, beautiful pianist off playing, and as the, the camera came up live, you saw the whole altar space, and there was my friend's casket, dead center, just like it is when I'm a pastor and do funerals, and the casket's right here, and it's a normal thing, but it was really different for me this time, because all of a sudden I said, that's my friend Vicky there. And it was, it was a shock to the system. And wow, that's unreal. And the person I went to high school with and was in band with and, you know, was best man at their wedding. And, oh my goodness. And it just touched a little bit differently. You all understand that, don't you? You all have been there. More times than you want to count, most likely. But we've all been sitting in the congregation, watching someone we loved be laid to rest. And we celebrate their life because, I'll tell you, Vicki was, was a woman of God who just, she was just fantastic. She was, she was just wonderful as a human being and just really a faithful person. So we all know that she's alive and well. And Scott texted me, he's like, she's my best friend. I'm going to miss her terribly. Um, he goes, I, I know I'm going to see her again, but I miss her right now. And I'm, yeah, you should. She's worth missing. We all get that too, don't we? That, yes, we have hope that they're, they're alive and well, and we, we know this, this is our faith, and I miss them right now. That's okay. You're allowed to. Matter of fact, it's how God has us wired to miss them right now. And this is not a new thing. This is something that has been part of the human condition for as long as there have been humans having a condition. 
and we read the book of Isaiah and listen to Isaiah talk to the people of Israel as they struggle through what is human loss and being left behind. So here, let's set the table really quick on what's going on with Isaiah. Isaiah is a prophet. He's one of our major prophets. Um, there, we have major prophets, five of them. We have minor prophets, 12 of them in the Old Testament. Anyone know what the difference is between major and minor prophets? The size of the book. That's exactly correct. That's the only thing that makes them major or minor. It has nothing to do with the quality of what they say. It's just the amount of what they say. And Isaiah is prolific. Isaiah's ministry covers 60 years. Now, it's not just any 60 years he covers. He covers a time in between the fall of the northern kingdom and the fall of the southern kingdom. And you need to understand that this is a big deal. Because you have the northern kingdom, and that's 12 or 10 tribes uh, live in the top half of what is Israel. And then you have two tribes living in the southern part of Israel. So what happens is in 723, 722, right in there, the northern kingdom gets sacked, and people get taken away to foreign countries and get spread out all over, and it is heartbreaking. And people in the south, they have cousins and family and aunts and uncles and grandparents who might live up north who now are no more. So they, they watch them get taken away. Folks would be the equivalent of Canada get taken over. Where we in the south sit there and go, are we next? They're watching. About 125 years later, the southern kingdom also gets overrun. Right around eight or 586. So about 500, 600 years before Jesus, we have the southern kingdom get overrun. And he is right, Isaiah is talking right in this time frame in between the two, saying, I know you know what happened there, and I know that war and rumors of war swirling and that we're afraid and that we're suffering loss and that we are mourning and we're trying to make sense of what's going on in this world. So we pick up at chapter 25. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed from old, faithful and sure. In the midst of all of this, I'm going to praise you, God. In the midst of this uncertainty and, and, and this fear and this mourning, I, I, I'm scared. and I will praise you, God, because you've made plans that are older than the foundations of this earth, and they're trustworthy. You haven't let me down yet. I'm going to lean on you. He goes on to just lay that out a little bit more, but I want to skip down to verse 6. Because this is one of our funeral texts. This is one of my favorite go-tos as a pastor when it comes to doing funerals. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich foods, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich foods filled with marrow, well-aged wines strained clear. All right. On this mountain. Mountain is a big deal in Israel, isn't it? Where are the Ten Commandments given? Well, on the mountain. You know, where, where do we find God? Where does the burning bush happen? On a mountain. Mountains are a place that are above us. And we see that as a symbol for where God resides, in the clouds, above us, power enough to shake a mountain. The creator of mountains. And it's difficult sometimes to get to, but God is there waiting. On this mountain... Some place that is impregnable. Some place that is, well, we have the high ground. On this mountain, the Lord will make a feast for all peoples. All right, a feast. If you know that there is a gang of people with ill intent and they're coming to your house tonight, are you going to sit there and set a nice big table and leisurely eat and drink and enjoy yourself and all that? No. You're going to go all A-team and set up all sorts of defenses, and you're going to call the police, and you're going to have it, you're gonna be on edge and on watch all night. God is saying there is no need to be on edge or on watch. I've got you. Matter of fact, I've got you so well, I'm setting a major 
feast for you. I'm setting the table with fattened things. Fattened things are things that haven't had to run their whole life. Things that are just hanging out all the time because there's peace happening. And I'm going to give you the good wine, not just two buck chuck. You're getting the good stuff. Now, you see, it says that like twice in a row. A feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, rich foods filled with marrow, well-aged wine stained, strained clear. You have to understand in Hebrew that there is no good, better, best. I can tell you, oh, that's good. Ooh, that's better. But that right there, that's the best. And you all know which one you're going to choose if you have all three to choose from, right? Hebrew, there is no good, better, best. The only way you know the quality of things is if it's repeated. And if it's repeated twice, I mean, it's like super amazing, wonderful. So you have this right here saying, not only is it a feast, it's an amazing feast. I mean, this is all the good food and good wine. So we're going to sit down, we're going to eat in the midst of your sorrow, in the midst of your concern, in the midst of your grief. We're going to set a table, we're going to have a party. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations. You know, we have that here in the church, right? It's a pall. P-A-L-L. It is a cloth that goes over top of caskets. It's usually white. Uh, sometimes they have a cross on that, and sometimes there's like some gold on there. And these, these go over all the caskets. And if you're in an urn or a Adidas shoebox, um, that you, we have a smaller one for that. Do you know why that is? Well, for us as Christians, it has to do with we cover the casket. You're covered with Christ. All are clothed in Christ. But more importantly, well, not more importantly, equally important is all are the same to God. So it doesn't matter if you're in a cardboard box or you're a solid gold sarcophagus, as soon as that cloth goes over top, no one knows what's there besides someone who God has claimed as their own. That's the beauty of the Paul. That's why that Paul exists. But it's not just our Paul because this is something that has been throughout all of history. The sheet. And when you see that sheet go over a casket, it causes a little bit of sorrow, doesn't it? It breaks the heart just a little bit. Because you're like, that's, that's my friend. That's, that's my, my parent. That's my spouse or my child. It is heartbreaking to have that put over top. But that shroud's going to be pulled away. And I, I love how this is put in Hebrew because it's almost like a Las Vegas magic trick. Here it is. Put the cover. Ready? One, two, three. Voom, gone. Where'd they go? Well, they're alive. They're well. They're resurrected. This is awesome. And that's what's being told here. And if you go to the very next line, God will swallow up death forever. Verse 8. Now, this has got a special ring to the people of Israel. They live in what is Cana, the land of the Canaanites. And the Canaanites have a god named Mot, M-O-T. Mot is the god of the underworld, the god of death. Now, here's why that god is important, because when you are laying on your deathbed, that god comes and gobbles you up like the food you are, Anyone going to have nightmares now? Because it's a scary looking God too and it comes in, it's got big teeth and it's going to eat you. And that's, oh my goodness, that's what that, that God is. That God eats you when you die. And what's really funny here is it says God's going to eat that God like he's breakfast. And therefore he can't touch you anymore. Our God is the big fish in the pond. Our God is the top of the food chain. Our God is going to swallow up death forever so that no death can ever touch you again. I love this line. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people will be taken away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. The disgrace of all people. Um, you ever watch someone being interviewed or talk to somebody who is, who is mourning and they start crying? And what, what do they say when they start crying? I'm sorry. Right? As if you're not supposed to cry when you're talking about this person. 
when you're mourning this person. No, that's natural, but we all feel a natural shame or disgrace to this. It is somehow wired in us, in our DNA. And though God's saying, I'm going to take away that shame and the disgrace of you having to apologize for crying over someone you love. And I'll wipe away tears forever. How many of us would love that? The morning we have getting those tears wiped away forever where we're not crying at the random drop of a hat because the thought comes up or we see something that reminds us and oh my goodness. Let me tell you how beautiful that wiping away the tears is. And it was, uh, I first realized it in a musical I, I got to be part of back in seminary. It's called The Gospel According to the Angel Julius. And it's a, a really neat well-done musical about this angel who loses faith and God sends the angel down to earth to experience God's redemption of the world. And so you have this, this, this angel, and we're focusing on Jesus and Jesus being the redemption, and we see Jesus doing these, these different scenes, and in between the scenes are these little vignettes, these little segues. So Jesus does this scene, we're doing this read-through, and we're just doing the first act, and this read-through happens, and this, this little segue, and this little girl comes up to Jesus, tugs on his robe, and goes, Jesus, an earthquake happened in my, or my, my baby brother got sick today. Why does God let babies get sick? And Jesus looks at her with those big, beautiful, loving, godlike eyes, and turns and walks off stage. I'm like, what? What's going on here? Well, later in, in this same act, we, we get there, and, you know, this segue happens where this little girl comes on stage again, and she pulls on Jesus' robe. She goes, Jesus, excuse me, an earthquake happened in my village today, and a lot of people got hurt, and some people even died. Why does God let earthquakes happen? And Jesus looks at her with these big, loving, beautiful eyes, the way you'd expect Jesus to look at her. And he walks off stage. I'm a little bit livid at this point. As a seminary student, as someone who has followed Jesus all my life, I'm going, hey, what's going on here? Well, we finally get to the second act, and we're doing the read-through on the second act. And once again, the little girl appears. It's a little segue. And she walks up to Jesus a little slower, a little sadder, tugs on Jesus' robe and goes, excuse me, Jesus, my baby brother died today. Why does God let babies die? I'm thinking to myself, I'm going, Jesus, so help me, you walk away. I'm, I'm getting up and I'm pummeling you myself. And Jesus looks at her with those big loving eyes and drops to his knees and throws his arms around her and says, knowing why will never take away the hurt. What you need to understand is this. When you cry, God cries with you. And he takes a handkerchief, wipes his tears and wipes hers. It is the most beautiful thing that I think I've ever seen regarding God wiping away our tears. Because that's what happens. That's what we understand. We don't cry alone. We don't cry forever. God will indeed wipe away our tears. It's okay to miss somebody. It really is. That's how God has you wired because their life is worth missing. And... At the same time, our hope is that we will be resurrected with them. But for now, God cries with us and wipes away our tears until there are no more tears. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and sing. <clears throat>
Let us confess together that which we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. You are invited to stand, kneel, or sit as is your tradition for prayer. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. For the church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, that all followers of Christ share the mind of Christ and strive to live together in peace, staying firm in the Lord. God of grace, hear our prayer. For green pastures and still waters and all the beauty of the natural world, that creation flourishes and humankind lives in right relationship with all you have made. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and all who hold positions of authority, that they govern in accordance with God's vision of justice, providing shelter and refuge to all in need, striving toward the goal of peace and prosperity for all. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all experiencing valleys of illness and grief, that they be healed and comforted and find rest in the presence of the Good Shepherd, who walks beside them, especially Jeanette Carlstrom, Sean Conrad, Janet Sear, Emma Cunningham, Jeannie Curtis, Lee Amy, Lois Gilbert, Marcia Grace, Phyllis Kennedy, Karen Lawfer, Pastor Mack, Bonnie McShane, Jim Price, the family and friends of Shirley Sandstrom, Patty Swanson, Len Toy, Gary, our homebound members and friends of St. Paul's, Laura Danielson, the family of Vicki Hansen, Joyce Mauschhauser, Leslie Payne, Chip Roward, Lee Schwartzfeger, Carol, Paul, Rob, and for those we name aloud and in our hearts. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence. God of grace, for this community of believers, that wherever there is conflict or discord, the love of Christ may keep us united and make us mindful of all that is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and excellent. 
God of grace, hear our Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with each other.
Let us pray together. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus, the one who does wipe away our tears, was gathered with his disciples the night which was betrayed. There at supper he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Every time you eat bread, every time, remember me. After supper he took the cup when he'd given thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you. It's a new covenant for the forgiveness of all your sins. Every time you drink wine, every time, remember me. We remember our Lord in the bread, the wine, and the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Please be seated for a few instructions. Uh, you are invited to the table. Uh, when you come forward, if you're coming from this side, please start over here at the choir loft and fill into the middle. If you're coming from this side, start here in the middle and fill in this direction. And then you can return to your seats after you've had the bread and the wine. For the bread, there is regular bread, but if you need a gluten-free option, I do have those available. Just let me know as I come to you. And when it comes to uh, communion, the wine, uh, the red is uh, wine on the outside and grape juice is clear on the inside. Take whichever you need and choose. All are welcome at God's table. Come and eat.
I invite you to stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and the light of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The God of glory. Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Our worship has ended. Now, now the service begins. begins. Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.